Hi, I'm Katherine Center, and I'm going to read a little excerpt of an essay that I wrote about reading for joy. And it's right here, so I'm going to be looking this way, um, and I hope that you enjoy it. A few years ago, at a party, I met a woman who was very embarrassed to confess to me that despite the goal she had set for herself to spend an entire year reading all the works of Faulkner, she hadn't gotten very far. She winced with shame as she confessed, I just keep falling asleep. Oh, honey, I said, that's not your fault. That's Faulkner's fault. Then I leaned in and gave her a look like, if he's not keeping you awake, he's not doing his job, right? There's a quote I love about writing by Dwight V. Swain. A story is something you do to a reader. I think about that all the time. What do I want my stories to do to readers? How do I want to make them feel? Because stories are, at their cores, emotion machines. They can make us laugh, make us cry, make us angry, make us fall in love, make our hearts sprint with fear. They distill the human experience and capture its meaning and connect us to our humanity like nothing else can. They are the closest thing we have to magic. At the very least, they should keep us awake. But we tend to think it's our fault when they don't. I blame school. We all had to learn to read and do that at the mercy of adults who were watching us and judging us, even with the best of intentions. We all had to learn vocab words and take spelling tests and get graded on our reading comprehension. We all spent years and years in classrooms where we came to think about reading and stories through many lenses none of them our own. I suspect a lot of people who loved to read as kids lost hold of that love as they grew up, as reading became more about achievement and grades and figuring out what the teacher wanted and less about pleasure and fun and play. I suspect that once reading becomes academic, it forces us to read from our heads instead of our hearts. But it's what we do from the heart that matters. When I talk about reading for joy, I'm talking about reading from the heart. When I talk about reading for joy, I'm talking about reading the stories you want to read rather than the stories you think you should want to read. I'm talking about a process of desnobification, of letting go of the idea that stories exist in a hierarchy with literary fiction at the top and all other types descending down toward embarrassing. Stories aren't a hierarchy. Stories are a universe. Stories are a twinkling, unfathomable, infinite Milky Way of possibilities. And I'm not picking on literary fiction or Faulkner. I'm just saying there are all different kinds of good in all different ways at all different times in your life. The best analogy I can come up with is music. There are all different kinds of music. There's country and hip hop and classical and folk and rock and jazz and on and on. Different people are drawn to different styles for different reasons. Most people like lots of different styles and have certain all time favorites that just resonate for them. Who knows why? The reasons are deep, deeper than explanations. Right around the time I was heading off to college, Whitney Houston's rendition of the Dolly Parton song, I Will Always Love You, was all over my radio, and I went crazy for that song. I'd sing along in the car, tilting my head back and belting it out with everything I had, and it made me cry every single time. I knew the lyrics probably had a romantic original meaning, but that is not what I brought to that song. For me, it became about moving on, about leaving home, about growing up. When I sang along, I thought of my mom and my childhood home and what it meant to leave Texas for the first time. That song still makes me cry to this day, and I don't know enough about music theory to articulate exactly why, but I know that it found me at just the right moment when I needed to feel some specific feelings about growing up and it helped me do that and it was just what I needed. Stories function in exactly the same way. The difference is music isn't one of the three R's from school. It's not the same kind of heavy hitting academic subject. Most of us didn't get tested on music and graded on it and judged on our musical tastes in the same relentless lifelong way. We don't carry that same baggage. We don't think 
classical music is the best music and anything else is embarrassing, we had the freedom to develop our own tastes, to find our own favorites and let the songs we needed find us. But stories really connect our heads to our hearts in much the same way. There's nothing more nourishing than finding the right story at just the right time. Stories make us feel things, big things, subtle things, things that defy explanation, and they give us a chance to go deep with those feelings. To be clear, I'm not saying don't read Faulkner. I'm just saying read the stories that resonate for you. If you genuinely love a story, that's a good story, period. There are all kinds of different stories that we long for or need or feel drawn to for all kinds of different reasons. Literary novels can delight you with their finely wrought language and subtle way of illuminating the world, but that's not the only kind of story that matters. A mystery can absorb you in the process of solving a puzzle. A thriller can make your heart thump with fear and then bathe you with a relief. A romance novel can leave you breathless in delighted anticipation. Fiction lets you struggle with life's big issues, navigating human relationships, figuring out who you are, coping with grief and loss in your imagination. It lets you practice for real life. It lets you get good at wrestling with all the big things you need to wrestle with in a safe way because you know it's not real. Maybe you need to read about escape. Maybe you need to read about transformation. Maybe you need to read about letting go. Maybe you just really, really need a happy ending. The right stories at the right moment can give you what you need, but you can't find those stories with your head. They go deeper than thinking. You can only find those stories with your heart. The only way to find them is to use your own inner compass, not your high school English teacher's compass, yours. Reading for joy doesn't just mean only happy stories or fun stories or bubblegum stories. Reading for joy means finding the right stories for your life at the right moment. It means reading from the heart, giving yourself permission to read the stories you need to hear, finding your own compass and trusting it to guide you. There's a quote that says play is the work of childhood, meaning Play is the way children learn the skills they need to grow up. But we don't give up play in adulthood, we just play differently. Stories are a kind of play for adults. One of the reasons we're drawn to them is that they're still teaching us things we need to know. They're still helping us grapple with all the complexities of human life. They're helping us get better at it. And when we find the right stories, the ones we really need, it feels right. It feels like play. It feels like fun. It feels like joy. So trust yourself. Read widely. Read eclectically. Read anything that hooks your interest. Read nail biters and barn burners and heartbreakers. Read about werewolves and teenagers and time travel and ghosts. Read big adventures and quiet lullabies. Read what you want. Read what you love. Let joy be your guide. There really are all different kinds of good. And if you let yourself read from the heart, the stories you need will find you. You'll know it's right when the stories turn their own pages. You'll know it's right when you stay up too late reading, when you can't fall asleep. I still write for fun and for love and for joy. I still write to give myself something to look forward to, both in real life and in the story. I'm still writing for my own inner reader and I'm still trying to make her laugh and keep her up late turning pages and make her believe in hope. I'm still trying to understand forgiveness and practice resilience and remember to be grateful. And so I write stories about finding joy in the struggle and standing up to be brave and savoring every little moment of grace. All things I'm trying to get good at in real life. It is work, but it feels like play. That's how I know I've got it right. It's true for writing and it's true for reading. The only compass you can follow is your own. Trust me on this, you won't regret it. Read for joy.